Hello gamers, Agent Soul and Matt Rice back again. Been a bit of a break, but I'm back with a new game that just came in today that I'm really excited about. Uh, it's going to be a Waste Nights, the second edition. Uh, plays one to four plays. Um, I think I'll try and get this to go two characters. Um, I just got this today. Um, keen to even just unbox it a bit. Um, I've only done the shrink off. Everything else is still fresh in the box. Double checking that all the components are there. And then I just want to thank Galactic Games and the creators. It's uh, Marek Mardell and Pavel Svek, I believe. I think I'll probably pronounce that completely wrong. I'm so sorry. But guys, please join me as I run through this game. Alrighty, Solus. Got Waste Nights here. Um, thought I might just do a bit of an unbox. Um, just to show you a couple things that I noticed when I've unboxed this, because it came in just one big box, and I went with the uh, Veteran Pledge. Um, but just for those, some people are interested in seeing what happens, um, what, sorry, what it looks like uh, when it comes. Um, so I haven't really unpunched much. I've unwrapped all the cards out of the shrink and just do a double check that make sure everything's there. Um, so nice and glossy looking cover on this one. Um, and what you'll see is you'll get some punch boards. Okay. Um, a couple from here. This one here is a Kickstarter punch board, which I found out. It says KS up in the top left there. Um, what is awesome is this thing, because I came to my door and I thought, okay, where's the expansions? And I asked on uh, Facebook, and a couple of people said, look, it should still be in the box. Um, and they're correct. Um, you'll get this Kickstarter guide, which is absolutely fantastic in listing out all the components uh, that comes with the Kickstarter version if you went for the Veteran Pledge. Okay, so uh, the Remnants of Civilization add-on comes with these cards and tokens. Okay, um, the Dogs of War expansion, you should see these inside. Okay, so it's very helpful, and then, whoa, all the backers. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, and a nice little appendix at the back, just to double check what you've got. Um, in case you don't want to add in certain parts, I guess. You can take them out if you want to play just the core game, or just certain expansions. Uh, you get some lore guide, you get a rule book. Rule book's handy, of course. Um, I need to read through that myself in a moment to help you set up the game. Um, but there's contents listed here as well. Absolutely fantastic. Um, little surprise, so hopefully this doesn't spoil for people. I should have said there's a spoiler alert coming up. Um, this looks like their next game must be coming. Uh, for those interested. Um, there's a little comic here. Something space themed. Um, yeah, it looks... Quite nice. What's it called? The Shadow Planet, the board game. All right. So that's their next project, I believe. Um, looking out for that one, definitely on the Kickstarter. Uh, you get your big board here, which will take up most of my table here, but it looks fantastic. Yeah, but Chronicles, your little dice bag. Now that actually came in the tray underneath. Let's just replay with this a bit. Uh, you get all your waste nights. Plenty of them in here. I've double checked these, they look fantastic. But just an example, here's Mr. Maul. Okay, for those that want to have a look. Yeah, I'll just maybe flick through a couple. This is excellent, yeah. And you can sort of pause yourself, guys, if you want to have a really good check on which one um, is the one that you would prefer to play with your first run through. Um, I'm going to choose a couple myself. I might try and do a two player co-op run through of this game. Um, so yeah, so there is meant to be some solo adventures in here. Uh, it's a guide that comes with it. Um, this looks fantastic. Uh, different types of setups, different types of scenarios. I mean, the replayability in this game should be huge. I'm looking forward to it. Here's the Book of Tales, that the logbook that you go through. Woof, huge. Big effort here, I reckon, to, to try and get this. Is it there? Hopefully, it plays really well. I'm really keen for it. Uh, you get some little bases, which is handy. Little dice. Uh, nice little components here. You your ammo, your med kits, and your little fuel tanks. Um, Kickstarter version, of course. I get some of these wooden location tiles. Look pretty cool. Uh, what else is in here? You get your vehicles. Yep, fantastic. <laughs> nice camel. Uh, some reference sheets in there as well, when you're playing the game. I like this little insert, you get your finger down the sides here, I love it. I hate it when I buy a game 
Uh, sorry, I shouldn't say hate. I mean, it takes a lot of effort for this game to get made. But it's just nice design. That I can get my finger in there. I can easily get all my cards out. Um, it looks like it should fit sleeved cards. Um, yeah, I think it should. I haven't sleeved them yet. Um, in the run through I might do with you guys, I'm not sure if I'll sleeve in time or not. Um, but you know, plenty of cards in here. These are normal, you know, poker size cards, we call them, uh, the magic size cards. And these look like the mini American or the, um, yeah, they'd be yellow FFG. I hope, well, maybe they're red. Ooh, better double check that. I mean, just as comparison, some, people, some of you guys might know better than me. It takes up that little corner there. Um, I'll have to check that. I've got some sleeves <laughs> ready to go. But some gear cards. Okay, plenty of gear, plenty of gear. Heaps of gear, that's all the gear really. Um, you notice that something is really flashy on the top right here with my light on. It's because it's a cover for the minis. The minis. There's two trays for the minis. That's, a, that's the normal version, that's the Kickstarter stuff with all the expansions. Fantastic, we'll get one out, just so we see. I mean, let's get the, th the throne dude out. Yeah, ooh, nice axe there. Alrighty. Bunch of guns on the throne. Maybe the doctor as well. It's not gonna focus for me, but, you know, looks quite good. Uh, what else you get? There's some more, like, upgrade cards. Things like that, you know, upgrade cards for all the different characters. Um, and then this last one here, which oh, I just noticed it doesn't have a finger hole for this one. So I better make sure I put some, <laughs> unless I put, you know, if I could grab that, that'd be better. Um, that's probably my only negative on this one. That, that tray there is a bit hard to get your finger into. But the rest are really nice, they're easy to get out. I really like that. Look, I'm keen to play this game. Um, I might just go through a setup very soon, um, what, how it looks when it's set up. Um, and I'll add that to this video, um, and then uh, we'll get playing hopefully very soon. Hello Solus, uh, Agent Solomon at Rice here, just doing a setup of Waste Nights and wow, it takes up a lot of the table. Um, looks fantastic, uh, I'm not going to lie about that, but this might be really hard to film. But what I might do is I might zoom in on certain parts of how to set this up, because at the moment there's things over here. Um, like all these cards, they're meant to be there. These are my spares just sitting here. Um, no big deal there. Um, ignore the cup. Um, up here, just got some other cards set up and other tokens. And I might zoom in on each bit um, just to show you what you need uh, to set up. Alrighty, so I've zoomed in a bit. Might just go around the board where I've got set up, what you need to set up just for a normal game. Um, of course, you need the big game board of Australia that's been um, uh, wrecked. In fact, just to give you a bit of a background on what this game's about, uh, post-apocalyptic um, Australia. Um, and it seems like there's no real major cause of what's happened, but it's a mixture of natural causes and um, a company called Cerebro who's experimenting with things and taking control of government agencies, things like that. Um, so it's a far-flung um, post-apocalyptic, sorry, post-apocalyptic, get that right, uh, type game. Um, and it's an adventure game, one to four. Um, and also I might... There is a scenario in the booklet, or a couple of scenarios, that are just for one player. And it is recommended as a start, I think, because it's, it's rated easy. So I might do the run-through of that when I finish my setup. Anyway, set up this game. Uh, Kickstarter-wise, there's a couple of things that you won't need. First of all, the parts deck. I'm not going to play with that. That's a separate module that you can add into the game to make it longer. But I think it makes sense. It makes it easier. Um, I might make another video in the future with, with these in them. Also, the city deck, um, I won't be playing this module either. These are both in the Kickstarter Veteran Pledge. Um, other things is these um, these cards I won't be playing with, these adventure cards I won't be playing with. So these will be set aside. Um, so what you'll need to set up first, as I said, was the board. Nice and easy to set up. Second is the special deck, which is this blue one at the top, which you can just see in the top left hand corner. Um, they've got numbers at the top, so and it's reminiscent to me. This game is reminiscent, I mean, the way the theme is reminiscent to, like, Fallout. Um, but I'm hoping it plays better than Fallout. Um, really am hoping. Um, so it has 1 through to 23. Um, just listed in order. Don't look at them, just put them over here. Assume they're related to the, uh, to the story that you read out. 
Second, uh, another thing you'll need is the exploration deck, which is this orange one. Give that a good shuffle. Put that to the side of the board as well. Next, I have the two wasteland decks. Separate it by, um, well, I guess, color. Um, on the back of it, this is the desert highway sort of explorations. Shuffle them up, put them down, and also separately shuffle up um, all these wasteland decks with the river and bush in it. Um, I believe they're called, um, I believe that's called Highway Desert Scrub. And this one is called, oh, sorry. I believe this one's called Highway Desert and this one will be Scrub Mountain. Separately shuffle them. Next, um, you've got your upgrade deck. It's a general upgrade deck combined with also specific people's upgrades. So if this focuses for me, which it's not trying to do, there we go. People have different faces on these ones. Um, that one there. They're specific to a certain character that you play. But there's also these separate, uh, what's that one, two, three, four, five, six uh, general upgrade cards. I'm just going to put them all um, at the top of the board. Um, other things I have to the side here, things I haven't really needed yet. They're just like spare tokens. Um, some of the tokens from the Kickstarter stuff that I won't be playing that certain scenario. Um, and um, I've also got some starter gear down here that I'll use later when I start my character later. So they're not necessarily needed, but I need to split the starter character. And that's a good segue into this gear deck at the top. So that gear deck, let's have a closer look. Um, next I've just got this gear deck holder. Um, you meant to have the uh, gear shuffled and also broken side up, which is this lighter side instead of that side. Okay, so put that in there. It goes up here. Also have this have this uh, wrecked deck, wrecked side face up. So wrecked side face up. I've added some extra Kickstarter ones into this as well. Um, give them a shuffle up, put them up the top. So next to that is this unconscious deck. Give these a shuffle up. Make sure the unconscious sides face up, not this side. Okay, I'll give that a reshuffle after I play, or when I play. Coming along a bit further than that, we start the tokens. Here's the plastic, uh, was it fuel, health, and ammo tokens. I'm just gonna leave them in the bag so we want to take it out. Uh, first player token. Um, nice um, looking uh, $1 strand coin there. Uh, not sure what that's meant to be on the back. But yeah, um, being solo, don't think I need it. I'm just gonna play with one character as well. Uh, one play marker is the new kitchen token here. Put them out. Also put out um, some of these radiation and blood tokens, I imagine. Things like that. They come out. Heat of tokens. These little exclamation ones come out as well. Also these uh, plot tokens with separate numbers on them. Um, they come out as well. Looks like some vehicle damage car uh, tokens. Okay, plenty of tokens. These little bar tokens, I think they're like preventing you from going to certain zones. I could be totally wrong with that. I haven't looked into it yet. As I said, I've only just got this. Um, these little road sign tokens, some of them are different. Some of the... Some of these are different. Some of the radiation symbol, uh, nukage symbol, um, exclamation. And these ones are very far right. I think they're just different sort of symbol. Um, tokens, I'll find out what they are soon. Also, these threat tokens said so similar to Arkham Horror sort of style. You put them into this bag. Um, I've got this one with the Kickstarter edition, and they just get shuffled up in that bag. Um, put them to the side. You also notice in the top corner, I've got all the dice sitting there. I've also got this time tracker sitting up here. Okay, I've also got two camping tokens one and two. Excellent. Of course, have the trusty old rule book, and that's what I've used to try and set this game up. Have the uh, Book of Tales handy. In here's all the plot lines and little numbers that you go to. A bit of a Bible for this game of things. It's handy to read over the first few pages here, how this kind of works. And this is the first scenario I'm going to play, Road to Ruin. I'm going to read through just the first bit to set up. Um, in some other ones, um, in some other games, you now start um, setting up your player. Um, but in the Road to Ruin, you set it up as you play. So I might just go through that a little bit. 
Just read through what a scenario book. So that'll be good for you guys to probably see before I get really into it. So I'm just going to go through the first couple of chapters to get the scenarios. To get the scenarios, you need your guidebook. And here's my road to room. Takes 45 minutes. Hopefully easy. Um, says it's easy here. One, meaning I can play with one character. Now it just says here, resolve all steps of the normal game setup, but skip the player setup. It will be resolved later. So it happens within this. Addition this adventure you read and choose by yourself, so it's recommended not to look at the narrative choices you do not take. So I'm going to play Road to Rule with a character. Um, look, there's a bit of um, text here. Look, I would read this, um, but for you guys, I mean, um, I might read it, and then if you want to skip it, just skip ahead of a minute or two. Um, in this time of ruination, hardly anyone remembers that before the scourge, there was a magnificent route circling the continent. You could take it and drive around Australia in a week. Yet, even then, it was a back-breaking journey. Um, does it take a week? I haven't done that before. I think it takes a lot longer than a week. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, long distances, heat, unstable weather, technical difficulties. Yep, only the brave few took this trip. Many years have passed since then. The aftermath of the cataclysm and time have been slowly yet and ceasingly ruining Highway 1. Some parts of it disappeared completely, damaged by explosions here and there, but the desert took its toll, covering whole stretches of the road and sand. In a few strategic places, Cerbero relics mined the highway, turning it into a true field of death. At the same time, untamed nature reminded humans that it rules over the most of the continent now. Nowadays, there exists only a few sections of the highway that will serve its original purpose, fast transportation. That's why everyone calls this horrible route the road to ruin. However, some daredevils still try to make the golden lap. Those people dream about forgotten places, hidden gems of public, or maybe it's all about bragging that you actually made it through National A1. There's no medal for it. At best, just a badge to pin your eye. But when someone took, looks such a crazy fool in the eye, they'll know that someone who survived almost 15,000 kilometers of hell. You're one of those daredevils famous for making the golden lap. You'd thought that it had opened some doors for you, but at the end of the day, you end up just where everyone else living a boring life of a survivor, trying to see another day in the waste. C1. So now I go to one in my book of tales. And for those that don't want to see it, obviously spoiler alerts, but this one's more of a setup, I believe. I had a quick look just before. So I go to one in my book of tales. One, set up. Choose, and randomly if you like, the night you want to play. In this adventure, you can only use the following knights, Avenger, Mechanic, Slasher, Spirit Warrior, Stalker, or Trailblazer. Take the chosen knight's sheet, tokens, and personal upgrade cards, return all unused knight elements into the box. Set aside the plot tokens numbered one to six, resolve the following entry matching your knight. Okay. So here are my options here. Here's my Stalker, Nelly Thompson. Uh, Linter is a Spirit Warrior. Johnny Taylor is a trailblazer. Zoe Shaw is the mechanic. Logan Harris the Avenger. Sally the Slasher. I've got to choose one of them, this game. Um, which one of these? I mean, it's all about getting around Australia. So which one of these looks like they've traveled a bit? Um, I mean, she's a mechanic. Yeah, she would have traveled a bit. Logan looks like he's probably traveled a fair bit, but I'm not sure if I want to play him. Um, so it's recommended one of these six. I've decided to go with Zoe Shaw, I think. Um, I would have gone with Mr. Maul if I could <laughs> pick that one, but maybe he's not suited for this. He looked like he's traveled a lot. I mean, I'll show you what he looks like. He looks like he wants to travel Australia for sure. Um, but I can't pick a scavenger, it says. So um, I'll go with the mechanic, Zoe Shaw. So I'm going to choose her. So it says here, you take the chosen knight's sheet, tokens, and personal upgrade cards. Return or unused knight elements into the box. So it doesn't say I grab her miniature yet, but um, I'll do that soon. So tokens, personal upgrade cards. Alrighty, so I picked up um, some blue tokens for Zoe to match her hair color. Um, I've got the plots one through to six. Down here, ready to go. And her personal upgrade cards. 
And to look at a personal upgrade card, so as you've got gas burner, you may spend uh, one gas to deal two damage to your enemy. That's for combat. Uh, one of a kind. Look, I'll read through these once I get the playthrough going as well, I think. Starts with a servo arm. And also, ooh, probably the broken side, I imagine. Servo arm. And also uh, the junk gun. Picked them all up. Let's go back to the book. So, so the plot tokens, we did that. Resolve the following entry matching your knight. If you are the mechanic, the slasher, or the stalker, C50. So I've got to go to C pay, uh, entry number 50. But look, I might stop there. I think we're getting to the stage now where I'll mostly set up. Um, if you were playing another scenario, if you would have this character set up like I've done now, um, except with also another vehicle, you choose a vehicle uh, with her. Um, and then look, I think you want to get to the playthrough, it would be best to go through the rest of that stuff. Hope you enjoyed this little setup. Um, hope it's not too overly long. Um, I'm looking forward to playing this game very soon. A playthrough will be coming up um, early in the new year, guys, definitely. Um, so, Happy New Year for those that are really keeping up to date. But otherwise, guys, and, and always remember, Solace, to grush your gaming thirst. Always play solo.